we talk about uh, strengthening the inner man uh, tonight. So I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. I believe this message is an important one that uh, we all need to strengthen our inner man. Now, when we have a strong inner man, uh, it's evidenced in the fact that we have confidence towards God. And so we're going to put a lot of emphasis tonight on the confidence part of it. Our, we have confidence when our inner man is strong. And that means our faith is built up. Our spirit man is built up, and we'll talk about ways uh, ways to do that in, in a little while. But but I want to say that it's important for our inner man, our spirit man, uh, to be strengthened with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And uh, when we have confidence towards God that He answers our prayers, that He is. With us. Uh, that has favor towards us. Mm -hmm. Do you have confidence that when you offer a prayer, it's going to be answered? Do you have confidence that God wants to give you his favor? Now, what does it mean if he gives you uh, his favor, if his favor is upon you? Well, it means that you can ask and you will receive and that you can seek uh, and the door will be open unto you, and you can you can knock, and it'll be open. You can seek, and you can find what you you have confidence. See, if you know that the favor of God is upon you, but if you don't have confidence, and what is confidence? Well, it's trusting the Lord, trusting the Lord that He hears your uh, prayers and that He answers them. You know, Jesus said in John. 11 verse 41 and 42 he said father uh, i thank you that you've heard me I, I know you always hear me jesus had confidence that the father always heard him and we know from first john 5 uh 16 and 17 it says uh that if we have confidence towards god uh then he we know that he hears us and that we have our requests answered. And so that's the important thing. We need to have confidence that God hears us. Now, Proverbs 3 talks about trust in the Lord. So that's what confidence is. Mm -hmm. It means that we're trusting in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all, all your heart. heart. So where's the trust? It's in the heart. It's in the not in, It's not in the mind. <laughs> Um, you know, Mark 11, verse uh, 23 says that if we speak to the mountain and uh, we believe in our heart and have no doubt in our heart, it's, it's all about the heart. What's going on with your heart? Have, have you built up your heart or your spirit man or your inner man? Those are all words that mean the same thing, inner man, spirit man, heart. Uh, so those are things. Uh, that's what we need to build up. Uh, there's a lot of people that have focused on their mind. That's the intellectual power, mm -hmm. but it really has no power in the spiritual realm or the supernatural realm. What you mm -hmm. need in the spiritual realm is your heart or the inner core, your core to be strengthened. And we do that by the Holy Spirit. Now, let's just think for a moment, what would be the benefits of our having a strong inner man and confident that God would hear us. And so I'm going to ask Sherry to read a couple of verses, first from Hebrews uh, and then First uh, John 5. Okay, uh, Hebrews 4.16 from the New American Standard. Therefore, let's approach the throne of grace with confidence. Ooh, there it is. There's the word mm -hmm. confidence. Let's approach the throne of grace. Right. Grace. With confidence. That's God's throne. So that we may receive mercy and find grace for help at the time of our need. Okay, so we're going to get help. We're going to get help from God. Uh, we need to go to his throne, to the throne of grace, with confidence. See, if we're wishy-washy, uh, maybe when we pray, we think we're going to get it, and then we go away, and then we don't know whether we're going to get it or not. 
that's being wishy-washy. It's being unstable. Right. right. And what we need to be is stable and sure uh, because that's what confidence is. It trusts that we have favor with God and that he answers our prayer. So Hallelujah. here the first benefit of having confidence is that we can go to his throne yes. and receive grace and mercy. Now, mercy, we need mercy when we fail, when we have a, a failure, when we, when we haven't done what we uh, needed to do, then we need mercy. And, and he gives us mercy. So if we have confidence, even though we've made a mistake, I may have sinned, even though we've, we've done these things, uh, we still have confidence that we can go to, the, to God and to his throne and receive mercy for our failures and grace to help us. That's his power of the Holy Spirit to help us when we're in need. Amen. Oh, so we need confidence. Uh, uh, so many people are unstable about it. They, they may they pray, wait. Or, they, wait. they may pray and, and ask God for something, but they don't know where whether they're going to receive it. And so the question I have for you tonight, do you have confidence? Are you sure that God hears your voice and answers your prayers? Oh, that's yeah. really important. I think Sherry has something. Well, I do. It's coming up strong in me right now that confidence is also being fully persuaded that God is able uh, to do uh, everything that we, we need or ask or desire. Uh, that he's able to fulfill promises. And, you know, it says that Abraham uh, did not waver. He did not stagger. And he had confidence toward the Lord. And he was fully persuaded that God was able uh, to do what he said he was going to do. Well, that's a that's another way of looking at it. Con being yeah. confident is being fully persuaded that you know certainly that God hears your prayers, and answers them. Amen. You know, Jesus, that's the way he operated, and he his prayers were always heard and always answered. Now, I want to let Sherry read from 1 John 5. 1 John 5, verses 14 and 15. This is the confidence which we have before him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us verse 15. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request which we have asked him for. So hallelujah. If you have confidence that his favor is upon you, his face is shining upon you, then you can ask whatever his will is. You can ask things hallelujah. to his will and you will know that he hears you and answers your prayers. So this is a, this is a time tonight we need to search ourselves. Yes. And uh, and see are we confident when we ask, ask God for something are we confident that he will answer it and uh, give us what we ask for? You know there's a lot of people that are not confident that their prayers will be answered. That's and so right. consequently they start asking other people to pray for them. Right. Uh, you can't imagine how many uh, prayer requests Sherry gets every day that she yeah. had, the people ask her uh, from all over the world, ask her to pray for certain things uh, because they have confidence in her prayers. They, they have seen that her prayers are answered uh, and they may not have that confidence in their own prayers. But really, we need to get to the point where we have confidence in our own prayers. Uh, there were uh, several men that called Sherry and I this afternoon and asked for prayer for another man. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> evidently, they knew <laughs> that we believe in prayer, that we, we believe in, the, in faith, and we trust in God. We, we believe in healing. And we believe that God heals. And so we believe in healing and we believe that God answers our prayers. We have confidence. And so here you've got uh, uh, several men hundreds of miles away and they called this afternoon 
and ask prayer uh, for another man. Um, and that's wonderful. And we're all ready mm -hmm. uh, to pray for them. But but we all need to increase in our confidence, our own confidence that God has favor towards us. Hallelujah. He hears our prayer and he answers our prayer. It would just be terrible to think that uh, he's not listening to you uh, or to me. It would just be a terrible a situation and, and think that our prayers might not get answered. Well, that's not the way Sherry and I approach things. We believe that our prayers will be answered. Now, uh, that last passage that Sherry read from 1 John, it talks about when we pray according to his will. So Sherry and I have to seek his will about what to pray for. A lot of times people ask us uh, to pray for their situation, for their loved ones, but we have to go to the Lord and ask, you know, what's his will? How do we, how do we uh, uh, phrase the, the prayer? What, how does he want us to pray? So it's important for us to pray according to his will, according to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The guidance of the Holy Spirit will show us how to pray. A lot of times uh, people call about prayers and we don't pray exactly the way they want us to. What, what's important to us is that we hear from the Lord and we pray the way he wants us to pray. And that's important for all of us because that uh, passage that Sherry read from 1 John 5 mm -hmm. says uh, we have confidence when we pray according to his will. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So you've got to know the word of God and you've got to know what his will is. And then you pray according to, to what, his his, will. what his will is. Then you have confidence. See, there's a lot of people that just do all kinds of prayers this way and that way. And uh, if that doesn't work, then they go that way and they try lots of different things. But that's not finding out his will. And that's where you get confidence. When you spend time praying first about what his will is for a situation, you know what his will is, and then you can pray uh, accordingly. And those are the prayers that will be answered. And just like Jesus said, he always hears his prayer. We've got to, uh, every one of us needs to get to that point that we know that the Father always hears our prayers. Amen. Always. Amen. Then when he hears our prayer, we know that he answers them. That's what that passage says. That is so powerful. I want you to read it again. It's okay. such a powerful passage. This is the confidence which we have before him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the request which we have asked him for. Oh, hallelujah. That's confidence. Mm -hmm. We ask according to the will. He hears us according. We ask according to his will. Then he hears us. And then he answers us. Amen. And confidence. That's not 99% uh, sure. It's 100% sure. sure. Amen. You're absolutely sure that he hears you and that you have the answer. You need that confidence. So many people do not have it. And it's because their heart uh, has not been strengthened. Yeah. They, 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 haven't, cl they haven't cl cleaned out their heart. And and there's three things I, I want to talk about here that um, how can we strengthen our inner man so that we have confidence towards God? Well, Ephesians uh, 3, 16, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, says that we can pray that our inner man will be strengthened. So you have to have a strong inner man. So I'm going to ask Sherry to read this prayer that Paul prayed for the Ephesians mm -hmm. that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner self okay so here's a prayer where is it Ephesians 3 16 3 16 you can pray it for yourself don't just pray it one day mm -hmm. see I prayed this uh, for month after month every day I prayed it uh, and, and so I memorized uh, 
this prayer is much longer than this, but this is just one verse out of it. Uh, and I memorized the whole uh, passage, the whole prayer, so that I could pray it at any time. I could just be walking down the street. I could be sitting somewhere. Uh, I could pray it. So I didn't even have to have my Bible over because I knew what it what it said, and I still know what it says. Amen. I prayed it over myself, and it changed my life. And so we need to pray this prayer. This is a prayer that you can pray over yourself. You need your spirit man strong. When your spirit man is strong, you will have confidence towards God that he hears your prayers and that he answers, answers your, prayers. your prayers. So there's three ways we're going to talk about how can we strengthen our inner man. The first way is we can pray. And if there's nobody else praying for you, for your inner man to be strengthened, let's pray for ourselves. Right. You can pray for yourself. I pray for myself. Yes. We can pray for each, each other. other. I'll just ask Sherry to pray for us yeah. for this particular verse uh, that, that we be strengthened in our inner man. Father, I lift up everyone that is on this video. Lord, I pray over them and I speak over them. Ephesians uh, 3.16, that you would grant unto them according to the riches of your glory to be strengthened with power through your spirit in their inner man. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I receive that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I receive a, that. Hallelujah. That's a prayer that can be prayed. Sherry prayed it. I've prayed it for you over time, but you can pray it yourself. Pray it over and over again every day. Pray this prayer right. over yourself that you be strengthened on the inner man in the inner man, and that will give you confidence. Oh, hallelujah. That God hears your prayers Thank and answers them. Amen. Now, another thing that we've been talking about this uh, last few weeks has been the fruit of the Spirit. It's really important uh, for us to grow in the fruit of the Spirit or develop the fruit of the Spirit because that's the very nature of God. Well, there are three fruit, and it's the fruit of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And these help strengthen our inner man, the fruit of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And these are righteousness, peace, and joy. I'm going to ask Sherry to read this verse from Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. All three of these fruit are very important, and they are fruit. The fruit of righteousness, the fruit of peace, and the fruit of joy. And they're all important in strengthening our inner man. We have we have to have fruit. We have to have food for the inner man. But yeah, the, yeah. the food of the inner man is spiritual so food. food. It's not natural. See, my brain needs natural food. My stomach needs natural. <laughs> my, our bodies, our my natural bodies, bodies need natural food. But our spirit man needs spiritual food. And here are three fruit that we can partake of and develop in these three areas. That's righteousness, peace, and, and joy. joy. Righteousness is being in right standing with God. Now, see, if we sin, if we sin, uh, then that takes us away from right standing with God. And so we don't know whether he's going to answer our prayer or not. But if we are in right standing with God, then he answers our prayers. And we know he answers our prayer. Now, where does right standing with God come from? Well, it comes definitely through the blood of Jesus. Amen. And the work, the his finished work on the cross. That's what 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 21 talks about. He, it says, Jesus, who knew no sin, was made to be sin uh, for us so that we might be made the righteousness, righteousness of, God of God in Christ Jesus. So it's all about him. That's where we get our righteousness from. But what if? We sin, and we all sin. Uh, so what happens if we sin? Well, 1 John uh, 1, 9. I'm going to ask Sherry to read this. This helps clarify to me that we can get back into right standing and shows you how to do it. 
if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous so that he will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay. Amen. So God is faithful. He's righteous. And if we sin and we confess our sins, then he's going to forgive us. Our sins will be forgiven. And that's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. But not only is our sin forgiven, he also cleanses us from all unrighteousness. That's right. And so if we were in right standing, then we sin uh, and we fall. And we're no longer in right standing. All we have to do is to confess our sins and he forgives our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And so that moves us back and we become righteous or the righteousness of and God. And then we can Christ. partake of the fruit of righteousness. Hallelujah. Then we then we can eat of the fruit of righteousness. Then we're in right standing. So we can Hallelujah. Approach, we can approach God. There's nobody in better standing with God than you when you are in right standing. Yes. And, and, and you cannot grow in righteousness. Uh, you are either in Righteous. right standing yeah. with God or you're not. Mm -hmm. And so if you ever get into the uh, area where you're not in right standing, confess your sins, he will forgive them and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And you'll be back over there. Hallelujah. And that's the best place you could be in right standing Thank with God, you. and he will hear your prayers and answer your prayers. Hallelujah. So righteousness is the first fruit of the spirit of the kingdom there uh, from Romans 14, 7. The second, the second one, Romans 14, 17, the second one is peace. Ooh. Now, peace is a, uh, a, is a spiritual uh, fruit, yeah. and it's very powerful. Uh, Colossians 3 says that it uh, uh, that it rules our heart. We yeah. need something to rule our heart. You, you know, without something ruling it, and that thing is peace. Yeah. Glory to God. Our heart will be all over the place. It'll be over there, and it'll be over there, be yeah. unstable and, and wavering. But when peace comes, the supernatural peace mm. of God, then that will rule your heart. So I'm going to ask Sherry to read. Read this from Philippians. Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's the peace of God. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. And Jesus said, my peace I give, give you. you. So the peace that you have is not what the world gives. It's the peace that Christ uh, gives to you, and it will rule your heart. It will guard up your heart, guard your heart, Amen. and guard your mind so that you will be focused and single-minded, and when you ask, you know that God hears your prayer and answers your prayer. Amen. So this, this message today is about strengthening the inner man. Amen. Do it with the fruit of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Righteousness, peace, peace and then peace. there's joy. And I'm going to ask Sherry to read this from Nehemiah 8.10. And I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. Do not be worried, for the joy of the Lord is your strength and your stronghold. Now, hallelujah. Something that we can hang on to. Yeah. Hallelujah. What's going to strengthen your inner man? It's going to be joy. Joy. The joy of the Lord. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. It's your strength. The strength Hallelujah. of the inner man. Oh, you, you think about your muscles and lifting weights and yes. all. Uh, that's a natural strength. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is a, an inner strength and the strength of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is, is your strength. strength. Yeah. So that's the reason that Paul said, rejoice and again i say and rejoice, rejoice. Do, have you been rejoicing because if you have joy in your heart you will rejoice on the outside hallelujah so, so you might say oh i've got joy on the inside but i've got a frown on my face well it, it, 
<laughs> if it's whatever on the inside is going to be manifested on your face, it's, it's going to show up on the outside. So, so if you have a, uh, if you're uh, unhappy <laughs> and you're you don't have any joy, it's going to show up on your face. It's going Amen. to show up in your words. But if you've got the joy of the Lord in your heart, you can rejoice. And Paul said, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. So rejoicing must be pretty important because he repeated it over and over. You you look there at Philippians 4 and you'll say, see that he said rejoice uh, several times. Amen. Amen. Sure you something. Yes, I, I just want to... Uh to bring forth uh, uh, some information about our uh, truth about Nehemiah. Nehemiah was, was a worker for the Lord and he was rebuilding the gates of the temple. And he was diligent about that, but he was persecuted and he was laughed at. He was mocked. And there were uh, two, especially Sanballat and Tobiah, that wanted to take his joy. But in Nehemiah 8.10, he says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. And so he kept his joy, even though he was uh, being uh, harassed and hindered on, on every side, he still kept that joy in his inner man. Hallelujah. Okay, so what we're talking about in this message is strengthen the inner man. But how do we know that we have a strong inner man? Is there certain things that are going to show up on the outside? Mm -hmm. And uh, and how do we get that? And it's confidence. We're going to have confidence, confidence that God is showing favor to us. And that means we can ask him and we will receive we'll find the answer. Hallelujah. We can seek and we'll find. We'll knock on the door and it shall be open because we have God's favor upon us. And I said, there's three ways that we can strengthen our inner man. And when we strengthen our inner man, we'll have confidence that God hears our prayers and answers them. I've talked about two so far, and I'm going to get down to the, to the third one. But the first one, well, the ways to strengthen your inner man is to pray. You mm -hmm. pray and ask God to strengthen your inner man. And he does that by the power of the Holy Spirit. Then I talked about three fruit of the Spirit that we need more. Uh, we need the fruit of righteousness, peace, and joy. And that peace is what rules our heart and the joy is what strengthens our inner man. Hallelujah. Now we're getting down to the third point. This is the third way to uh, strengthen our inner man. And this is by praying in the Holy Spirit. I Amen. Want to share you to read this from Jude uh, chapter 1, verse 20. Okay. But you, beloved, that's you and I, building yourself up on your most holy faith, or building up that spirit, man, praying in the Holy Spirit. Okay. So how do we strengthen our inner man by praying in the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's something <laughs> very important, praying in the Holy Spirit. It'll build us up, build up that inner man. Now, it doesn't build up your muscles out here to, to lift more weight, but it builds you up on the inside. Yes, I mean. That's where, you, where that confidence comes from. It's the confidence from the inside that comes up and, and, and says, God, here's my prayer, yes. answers my prayer, because I'm asking according to his will. I've already heard what his will is. And when I pray according to his will, I have confidence. Hallelujah. He and he answers my prayer. And so this message today is short. It's simple, uh, but it's powerful. Amen. Are you confident that God is showing favor to you? Are you confident that God is hearing all of your prayers and answering all of your prayers? Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. We all need to get to that point where we are confident that we can pray and that he will hear our prayer and answer our prayer. And so many people 
many, many, many people are not confident that God hears their prayers. But I've told you how to do it, to strengthen that inner man. And then you pray in faith and God will hear your prayers. Hallelujah. So thank you for being here today. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry and uh, she will have a few words to say. Well, I also think about John the Beloved that <clears throat> they put him on an island by himself. And there was no one around to pray for him. There was, there was no other person that he could call on his cell phone and, and get them to pray or go to a church meeting and, and have them pray. No. And I believe that John the Beloved knew the Lord so well that that confidence was there and it opened up the door. Listen to what I'm saying to you. He opened that opened up the door. That confidence is so powerful. It opened up the door to the revelation, to the book of revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so that confidence, wh why do we want confidence? We want confidence because we want, Jesus Christ to be revealed yes. in us. We want to know uh, how to walk uh, like Jesus walked and be like him and talk like him and, and do what he does. And that confidence is that supernatural force that, that we know that God hears and will respond uh, to, to what we're asking. And, um, you know, I go back to the fruit of joy for just a moment. And that is, it says that when we come into the presence of God, we're going to receive joy. Hallelujah. We're going to receive the fullness of joy. When So the more you enter into praise and worship, the more you enter into your uh, prayer time with the Lord, the more you um, just come before him with thanksgiving, um, that confidence starts to build in you. And, and he imparts that into you. And so that when you begin to pray for someone else or uh, pray for a need that you have, then, then you know that he hears you. And because that confidence is already there. And it's, um, I just, uh, I thank the Lord for uh, being so good to us that he gives us that confidence so that, so that we can be assured that when we pray, that our prayers are heard and going to be answered. And, um, and I think that, that this message, like Brother Fred said, it may be uh, simple, but the Lord has told us to keep the word simple. You know, it's not hard. It's not, you know, we're not the theologians. We are spiritual uh, individuals who love the Lord, who love the word, and that we believe that God hears us. And so I encourage you tonight to, to, to think on this message and to begin to do uh, what, what we've asked. Uh, pray over yourself and begin to uh, walk in the, the fruit of righteousness, peace, and joy. And then begin to pray in your prayer language. Begin to, to utilize that very powerful um, uh, vehicle, if you will, to communicate. Uh, with 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 God and uh, you know God is a spirit and so therefore when you pray in the spirit you're speaking straight to him you're speaking only to him and and he's just going to build up your faith and and build up the confidence level that you have he's going to build up the the gifting that's on the inside of you every single one of you have a gift from the Lord and it says that your gift will make a place for you in the body of Christ. 
Now I'm going to share something with you that the Lord shared with me today in that he is positioning people right now. He is putting them in the position that he wants them to be in. Is it a prayer warrior? Is it a teacher? Is it a, a preacher? Is it a, a, a person who uh, shows hospitality? Is it uh, a person who gives? You know, that's a gift. Uh, the, the gift of giving, the gift of hospitality. It may not be one of the nine gifts of the spirit, but it is a gift. And so your gift will make a place for you and will also give you that confidence that, you, that you're one of his children 